Hi, here's another video from Fortune Buchholz of Not Fortune's Fool and NotFortunesFool.com. You know, a lot of people have written me to ask specifically what the benefits are of getting a reading, either Tarot or Lenormand, and what the difference between the two are. So I thought I'd just make a quick video and I would talk about the benefits and I would show you some of the decks that I use regularly in my professional work and also talk about the difference between Tarot and Lenormand. Uh, not everyone will agree with my uh, ideas, but this is just how I work and how I read. And of course, you know, I completely respect you if you have a different opinion. We can still have a constructive dialogue and work well together. So let's go ahead and just get started. First of all, what I'd like to say is the benefits of a reading, whether Tarot or Lenormand, are absolutely profound. You know, a lot of us have trouble hearing ourselves. And by hearing ourselves, I mean actually listening to our own feelings and accepting that our own feelings are true. We also have uh, a big struggle often with uh, trusting our own thoughts, trusting our own solutions, believing that we're capable of creating our own solutions, and uh, talking to ourselves in positive can-do language. Right? So these are all things that readings can help you with over time as they help you articulate yourself to yourself with positive new habits. It doesn't happen always right away, sometimes a reading, two readings, three readings, then you begin to get the hang of how to dialogue with yourself using cards as a tool, as a reminder, as a springboard, right? So let's just go ahead and very quickly talk about what I think the eight main benefits of getting a reading are. The first of all is to escape your own habits of thought. All of us have well-worn ruts of thought, biases, uh, habits that cause us to leap from A to Z, right? We go from B to M just because this is our, our habit of mind. We have these grooved tracks of thought and we just tend to roll along with them even when they may not necessarily fit current circumstances, right? We all have shortcuts or you might say heuristics, right, that have helped us in the past. But the problem is, is that life changes so rapidly, our circumstances are changing so rapidly, and sometimes our habits of mind uh, and our patterns of thought lag behind. We can often see this when we talk during a reading, because we can see how you may have certain metaphors that naturally come out that you think are just figures of speech, just, figures of speech, right? But every metaphor we use talks a little bit about our internal mind structure. And many of us often use negative metaphors or metaphors that we've outgrown. You know, I think back to a reading that I did several years ago, actually many years ago now in New York, where a woman said that an insight came to her like a ton of bricks, right? So she felt crushed by this new information. She didn't say something like, a light bulb went on, Eureka, the sun rose, new light, it dawned on me. She used none of those kind of positive metaphors associated with light and clarity. She used this dark, heavy, crushing metaphor, ton of bricks, right? And that kind of tells you sort of about her mindset, which she didn't even realize and she didn't even admit to herself, right? It was just the expression that she was used to using and it, it just talked a lot about her own point of view, right? We all have moments like this, but the tarot, by pointing us in different directions with profound images, the Lenormand by pointing us in different directions with simple images from daily life. Both of these can spring new metaphors on us and as we look at them and dialogue with them, as we ask ourselves, you know, how does those strike us? What could those mean for us? Uh, how do they seem relevant to our current situation? The new metaphors based on our experiences of those images and symbols will arise and they're often much more positive. If they're not more positive, then we can work together to turn that language in a positive direction and to turn those metaphors in a positive direction so that you are improving your self-talk, right? I'll come back to this self-talk problem later, right? Uh, and so while we're, you know, discussing the whole self-talk thing, most of us have been taught to use negative self-talk. It's a learned habit, particularly among many women, right? 
Uh, people have talked negatively to you. You may have grown up in a critical environment, a competitive environment. You may have had unsupportive parents, unsupportive siblings, unsupportive teachers, unsupportive supervisors at work. So as a result, you kind of have learned this negative, critical talk, and you can't get out of it, right? This this is a huge problem. Many women constantly struggle with the negative self-talk. And when they come out with it, instead of, you know, not just thinking it, but when they actually come out with it in conversation, particularly in business, it really cuts them down, right? Other people look at their negative self-talk and think, she's not that competent. She's not, you know, that good. So instead of presenting negative images uh, of ourselves, instead of projecting them into situations where they're unwarranted because we are good, we are experts, we can do the job, we can excel in school, we can access our own power and excel in life. We can end negative self-talk by this process of learning new metaphors and learning new self-images through using Tarot and Lenormand as a tool. Another thing that we can do is we can use the cards as a, as a springboard Right, where we can step back, look at them, look at the images, create a new narrative, create a new story, and then we can act on that new story. Right. So, so much of what we tell ourselves is true because we make it so. Right. So by changing our narrative, we can actually create a new reality for ourselves, a more positive reality, because we have this habit of acting on our own language and on our own preconceptions. And with Tarot, we can reframe our issues using the profound visual rhetoric of the Tarot and of the Lenormand, right, to actually go ahead and make a new narrative and then act according to that new narrative. And that's how we find Lenormand and Tarot to be an awesome springboard for new possibilities, for brainstorming new actions, for seeing new ways of acting. And, and so this is a way for us to step back, get the objective picture, get a more objective picture, right, and then create new habits from a new story. So once we do this, of course, then we also gain clarity, right? This is the fourth thing that we gain. This is our fourth benefit, is we can get a clear path of action with a new story, right? And once we have a new story, once we've created new, more positive talk, right, we can then look at new options that become available to us through this new narrative, right? This allows us not only to see clearly what different kinds of options are, but we can make difficult decisions based on this, these new options, right? We can actually just create this new line of thought and this new line of behavior, and we can follow that through in a logical fashion. We can trust our emotions and we can act to make a decision instead of being caught up in this ball of confusion, indecision, lack of self-trust, negative self-talk, right? We can use the Tarot and the images, the Lenormand and its storyline to go forward, to try a new path, right? And that is incredibly valuable. It can be so hard to have the courage to do that and to find a tool that helps you do that easily, naturally, in your own language and in your own dialogue, right? So this allows you then to learn a new trust in yourself or to relearn the trust that you used to have in yourself that you may have lost, right? Or that you may have never fully developed due to your background and history, right? So there are a lot of people, you know, who are very critical of life coaching, counseling, consulting, other kinds of coaching, right? Because they feel that coaches uh, language the matter in a very forceful way. And what I mean by that is they basically will tell you what to do or they'll tell you how to get their life, not your life, right? This is a, a great benefit of using cards as a tool, the Tarot and the Lenormand, is that, you know, they don't tell you what to do, right? They trigger in you new narratives based on the visual rhetoric, the images that you see on the cards, right? So what you're doing is you're accessing your own truth, either consciously or unconsciously, depending on the way you yourself work, right? And you're making these new metaphors and you're making these new connections, these new narratives, based on your own history, based on your own power, based on what is working for you, right? It's not what I tell you, it's not what some other 
uh, life coach or some shrink or some other person, some well-meaning friend or relative tries to force on you, right? It all comes from you as we consult the cards together, as we sit, listen to each other, construct the narrative, right? Make sure that it's a positive narrative, investigate it together, right? But basically the active person is you, right? And I'm here as a co-sitter, a co-listener, an active listener, right? Well, you go ahead and we, we weave our way through the story, through the cards together. Uh, and that is a tremendous benefit to be able to learn to trust yourself, to learn how to use this tool to access your own truth. And that is just the most empowering and useful experience. So we also, after we read, you know, the beautiful thing about the Tarot is unlike other forms of conversation, uh, perhaps other forms of consulting, coaching, or even some types of therapy, we have an actual record, right? We have the actual card spread and we can take pictures of it. We can write email descriptions of it. You can put it in your journal. I often use secret Pinterest boards to record readings for clients to create a kind of case history or, or build up a history of readings, right? So you can easily make a record of them, uh, consult them, make notes about them, go back and see them, see how things have come out, see how things have changed, see how when you go back and look at it, your own narrative may automatically update so that something that you are struggling with then in light of later events or in light of later readings comes back and makes perfect sense to you and it falls into place. You'll have an aha moment, right? And again, you'll be able to trust yourself and see how your own intuition came true for you. Uh, so that is, you know, really uh, an incredible, incredible uh, value. The ability to, to have a strong visual record that goes back in time. This allows you also to know that you're making progress. Right? This is the eighth and last benefit I'm going to mention. So you can notice that I've made this progress, right? I started out with these fears, these habits of negative self-talk. And now, four or five readings later, I've gotten better at this, right? My negative self-talk has vanished. It has reduced, right? I'm less anxious. I trust myself more. I have better intuition. I have better outcomes. I feel less alone when I'm with myself right? That way you can come to see yourself as a valued companion, right? And not as a, a ball of anxiety that works against yourself. It's sort of this negative stranger of self-talk and anxiety that often hangs over our shoulders. All right, so I hope that those um, eight things made sense to you. I hope they resonate with you. They certainly have worked for me in my personal life and they work for many of my clients. So now I just wanted to go ahead very quickly and talk about some of the decks that I commonly use in my practice, just so you can see. So I'd like to start off with the Tarot here, because a lot of people ask me about Tarot, although right now here in Pittsburgh, where I'm reading, I'm most commonly associated with the Lenormand, I do also read Tarot, and I read several types. So let me just show those to you. Of course, for people who like the RWS or Rider Waite Smith deck, which I call the Pixie deck after Pamela Coleman Smith, I often use Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Tarot. Right? It's a very popular deck for people who like that system. It speaks to a lot of people. Also, I do like to use this foreign language. I know it's in Polish of Chiro Marchetti's Tarot of Dreams, but this is a beautiful edition of this deck. And of course, everyone is familiar with the archetypal images, or if not, they're easily explained in English. So just because the card titles are in Polish doesn't stop the beauty of the deck from being communicated. So uh, those are the, the, the two Chiro Marchetti decks I use for that system. But uh, when I read Tarot, honestly, I'm more often going to historical decks or, of course, to the classic Tarot de Marseille, which is the deck that speaks to me the most. So I often use this Tarot de Ville by Flournoy, beautiful hand-stenciled version. I also use this historic deck, the Vaquetta deck by Osvaldo Minigazzi in Milan, a beautiful deck artist. I've talked about this particular deck before. 
And then if I want to talk about shadow issues, right, the parts of the personality that make you uncomfortable, but you want to deal with or you need to deal with in order to be a mature and whole person, right, like how to deal with your anger, how to deal with your jealousy, right? You can't just ignore it, right? And it's hard to work through it by yourself. It can be really scary. But cards really help you working through these negative issues and incorporating them in a positive manner, right, into your personality. All emotions give you some kind of useful information. And we've often been taught that anger is bad or that jealousy is bad, but they're actually giving us a piece of information that we need to know, right? And we can act on them, think about them in positive manners. We don't have to act on them in impulsive and negative manners, right? They can be integrated successfully into our personality. And so we can use them to create a better us, a better you, right? And not just let them drag us around for very bad outcomes. So uh, for that, I like to use this uh, beautiful Tarot Noir. This is another Tarot de Marseille deck. It's a beautiful, dark Tarot de Marseille. Great for shadow readings, and I'll use that when requested for shadow work. And another historic deck that I really like a lot, again, this is a deck I've spoken of before, is Osvaldo Medagazzi's Visconti deck. This is a beautiful deck, and its beautiful large images often speak quite poetically to people. So um, I find that a lot of clients who are willing to step out of the norm, so to speak, right, will actually really, really enjoy this classic ancient deck, one of the earliest tarot decks. And then an offshoot of tarot that I like to use for those people who come asking me about astrology or those for whom astrology is important is, of course, the Minkiati. This is a variant of tarot that has 97 cards. It has a lot of trumps, 40 trumps, and the extra trumps over the uh, Tarot's normal 22 are partially due to the inclusion of the astrological signs. So unlike other Tarot decks where you have to sort of force the astrology onto it and nobody can agree what it is, we solve that problem here in the Minkiati just because the signs are there. So if, if astrology is important to you, then I also accommodate that by using the Minkiati. Now, as to the Lenormand decks, right? Let's go ahead and just qu quickly go through the Lenormand decks. So, of course, I'm uh, very well associated with the mystical Lenormand. This is a great, very charming deck, right? And also the mystical Kipper. I can read both of these separately, but I often read them together. And clients prefer this mixed reading, right? And they just really find a lot of benefit in that. Otherwise, my clients most commonly request of course, the use of Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Reverie, a beautiful sort of fantastical steampunky Lenormand, very popular. And the most popular deck for me, particularly here in Pittsburgh, is Robert Place and Rachel Pollock's Burning Serpent Oracle. But I've already made a video about this deck before called, you know, Why Pittsburgh Loves Lenormand, where I've compared this deck to a traditional Lenormand. So you can go back and see that if you haven't seen that. Now, a lot of people also ask me why they would choose a Lenormand reading over a Tarot reading. And to my to my mind, other people again will disagree, but this is just the way that I work, right? So of course you should choose one whichever interests you, right? Whichever you're most comfortable with. Uh, so if you like Tarot, please feel free to you know choose a Tarot reading. We have a variety of layouts and spreads. Uh, of course, all of you who are familiar with Tarot know there's a huge, huge range of layouts and spreads, one for almost every occasion in question, right? So that's easily accommodated. With the Lenormand work, we tend to focus more on very practical, direct, daily, and accessible information, right? So it's not always a case that people come and say, you know, I really need to work on my anger, or I need to release the jealousy that I have around my ex, Right? So that I would do with the Tarot Noir, right? And that would be a, a multi-consultation process. Then we would record that on Pinterest and do a lot of meditative work and do journaling and all of that to sort of work through that until we're in a more positive place and we've seen what the lessons from that experience are and we've been able to incorporate those lessons, you know, together, not only in your life, but also working together in our active listening sessions, right? So... Um, 
you know, that's fantastic. And if you want to do that kind of deep work, nothing will beat the tarot, that's for sure. But you may have a more practical, more simple question. You're more interested in tracing out cause and effect, right? And for that, of course, Lenormand really, really excels, right? So um, it's really, to my mind, not that Lenormand or tarot is better. They are um, both capable of certain strengths and certain weaknesses. I personally find that Lenormand is a great contemporary deck for practical questions due to its structure. It has time built in, it has a lot of animals allowing us to easily do animal communication. It's also because of its structure of significators, it easily incorporates modern and contemporary relationships and identities such as L, G, B, T, I, A, and same-sex relationships. All of these things are easily handled in the structure of the Normand, and maybe they're a little more difficult to make as clear in the Tarot. So that's uh, just my opinion. That's just how I work, and I hope that you found uh, this video of benefits, tools, and differences interesting to you. Of course, I'm always happy to see you either here in Pittsburgh face-to-face -face at Journeys of Life or in a private session here in Pittsburgh. And of course, I am available over Skype and WebEx. So please, um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Don't hesitate to call me or email me. I'm always really happy to hear from you. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. So until we speak again, have a great day.